Welcome, David Wiss here, registered dietitian, founder of Nutrition and Recovery. Today we're going to talk about impulsivity. This is such a rich topic. Impulsivity has been defined as unplanned reactions to internal or external stimuli with diminished regard to the negative consequences. Another definition looks at it as a preference for small immediate rewards versus larger delayed ones. This concept of delayed discounting is a behavioral economic index of impulsivity often measured with tests on money, where they offer someone, do you want $100 today or $200 in a month? This is an important construct for understanding addictive behavior. It's also important for understanding bulimic symptomatology, where a reward arriving sooner is more appealing than one arriving later. This is relevant to food, drugs, alcohol, etc. It makes perfect sense. If someone is stressed, they're more immediate focused and they're willing to get past the immediate crisis by disregarding future health in favor of things that work in that moment. It's not brand new as a concept. It's been looked at related to substance use disorders as well as binging. It's been linked to reward sensitivity. In other words, the mesolimbic dopaminergic pathways that motivate behavior. It's more relevant to those with binge eating and loss of control and less relevant for those that have anorexia nervosa. The Barrett Impulsiveness Scale has been used to test this often. This particular study used laboratory meals to measure it in eating disorder populations, suggesting that we need to address impulsiveness for those that have bulimia nervosa. So it's been looked at with food, it's been looked at with drugs, we need to start considering more disorder specific patterns of impulsivity during assessment and treatment. Uh, dietary restraint is an important thing to consider, those that diet have higher levels of impulsivity, but in this study they showed that those with higher BMIs also have higher levels of impulsivity. An important construct that I've seen is called negative urgency. This is the tendency to act rash when distressed. Uh, it's certainly linked to those that have bulimia nervosa. It reinforces the behaviors when self-control is depleted. Uh, one study suggests that negative urgency is the most important impulsivity dimension. Uh, in other words, those that are fully recovered have less negative urgency, and this is an area where we can start to treat people. Uh, psychologic literature has pretty much looked at impulsivity as linked to emotional instability but we need to start considering neuroscience. How does the brain structures play into this stuff? How do we treat the impulsivity, which will in turn reduce the eating disorder behaviors? Um, this is the future. We need to think about dopamine receptors and how these genes affect impulsive decision-making. There's brain imaging studies that are starting to explore this stuff. A lot of it's still in its infancy, but I have hope that much will emerge in future years. Regardless, we need to think about impulsivity in the assessment process for uh, disrupted eating behavior. With adolescents, negative urgency pops up, but the authors are saying we can actually use cognitive control training for those with higher levels of impulsivity. We can certainly consider this uh, in treatment for eating disorders, more effective interventions that restore regulatory balance between the impulsive parts of the brain and the executive functioning parts of the brain. How can we treat impulsivity, which will in turn be a fruitful treatment for these other disorders that emerge as a result of the impulsivity? So there's a lot of potential therapeutic benefits there. Uh, one's degree of impulsivity will impact their choices and decisions. We know that it's true for substances. We know that it's true for food. Impulsivity is an important consideration for eating disorders associated with loss of control, less relevant for anorexia nervosa. It's often measured by the Barrett Impulsiveness Scale, which you can find online. We definitely need better tools to measure impulsivity around food. We have this concept of delayed discounting and negative urgency, which are important considerations. We need more neuroscience data. This is the future. And the question that I'm posing is how does the food we eat impact our impulsivity? I'd love to hear from you. If you have questions or comments, please leave them below.